Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Everyday Healthy Human Podcast. My name is Jen Rulon, or you may know me on the gram as Coach Jen. Well, I have a very incredible, incredible human being. She is an Ironman athlete. She is a friend. She is a, oh my God, girl, we have gone back and forth so many years. I mean, uh, so let me introduce you, Monica uh, Coast, Co- Coast, 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 Coast. But you like were Monica Coast. Caban for years, lots of years, yes. Um, and so, Monica, welcome, 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 welcome to the Everyday Healthy Human Podcast. Thank you, I appreciate yeah. that, and um, you know, I'm really excited to be on and get this experience. So, yes, I'm, I'm really excited. Well, the great thing about you, Monica, I mean, we've known each other for how long? I mean, 12 years, 12 years, 12 years. No, yeah. probably more because that was from the onset of right. the accident. So I was like right. three years, maybe 2019, no, no, not 18, 2009, 2008, Nine. right. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and when we first got on the call with each other, we were like, she was like, oh my God, you look beautiful. I was like, so do you. And we're like, oh, we're aging. We got readers on now, you know, but it makes sense. You know, I mean, if we've known each other for as long as we have, I mean, it makes sense. So yeah. um, why don't you give everybody your two minute elevator speech of who you are? And then we're going to really dig deep into your story because I think your story, story is incredible. Thank you. Um, well, um, like you said, I'm now Monica Cost, and I am the um, president and founder of the nonprofit called Now You See Me Foundation. And um, we help athletes that have been tragically injured uh, while training, specifically cyclists and runners that are more susceptible to the elements on the road, right? Uh, in addition, we help aid spinal cord research. Um, lately, we have partnered with UT Health uh, San Antonio in um, a research study that they um, are starting this fall, actually mid-October, um, with a, a piece of machinery called the Power Step Initiative. Um, so preface is spinal cord injury power step initiative and um the foundation has helped raise funds um for dr selena morgan who's um has spearheaded this uh, research study she is also my physical therapist and wonderful friend um and she is uh been a adjunct professor uh teaching um you know, physical therapy, and she's a neurophysical therapist, which is even, you know, uh, yeah. further on in the education. And she's even going further on to get her PhD. Um, Amazing. As, as, yeah. And um, so she spearheaded this, um, this research study that um, involves this treadmill that's about 10 to 15 feet long. I mean, I'm excited. It fills up a whole room. Um, and what it does, it, it hoists people that are quadriplegics that can't get out of their chairs per se. Um, people that have issues with walking me, um, I'm, I'm a little bit more advanced and I'll get back to mm-hmm. me who we'll I talk am. About that. Yep. Yeah. And, um, so they are able to get the exercise um, which, which is called locomotion um, exercise. And what they're doing is on the treadmill, the physical therapists get their legs and they walk them um, sure. on the treadmill. And that signals and fires to the brain that, hey, it's all connected still. If yeah. the spinal cord has not been severed, then there right. is actual some connect uh, connectivity. And even- well, let- where people that are on the chair um, that thought, you know, no, you're never going to get out are are actually getting uh, signals. Yeah. Right. Well, let's, let's, I love talking about that, but I really want to talk about your story because this is why we're here because of your, your transition, because, you know, here I was this Ironman athlete 
not really knowing what to do next. And so I transitioned into the everyday healthy human. Here you were the same thing, right? You were an Ironman athlete, done numerous half Ironmans, did Ironman Florida, had a good event. And then, and then you were getting ready for Ironman Arizona. So let's go back to uh, 2012. Yes. Um, so I was four weeks out from Ironman, Arizona, when a, uh, I was on a routine training ride with Veronica Thaxton and yep. uh, we had become really close and we were side by side and we were coming southbound, uh, from Bernie to San Antonio, which, you know, that route, um, and we were on the frontage road when an 82 year old, uh, motorist, uh, driving a heavy duty, um, Dodge pickup truck, farm truck, um, and just swiped me from behind. Uh, I was then thrown 30 feet in the air, landed on my back, um, and had an L1 burst fracture and instantly paralyzed from the waist down. Um, Veronica, who was right next to me, you know, after, after it all, we both were like, we did not hear this this truck coming by. I don't know if it was because we were in a little dip, um, a little valley, mm-hmm. um, about to crest up, and um, she was looking straight uh, on the road, and she had she had black um, cataract uh, glasses that you wear um, when you have cataracts, right? And right. she she claimed that she did not see me. Therefore, ergo, I named my foundation um, that I started uh, after her uh, being a little catty because she said she didn't see me. And I uh, named it the Now You See Me Foundation, you know. Right. Well, now you see me, lady, you know. Right. And um, I started it, um, you know, and the conception, um, I conceptualized it in the hospital um, when a, um, I had to have a psyche bell, I was there for about a month and mm-hmm. I was blowing out of OT. I was blowing through PT. And the next step was, the, um, the, the, the person, well, the, the, um, the therapist that was supposed to release me had, um, you know, had somebody that was a, a, a para that had gone through similar. However, it was not similar. He had fallen um, from his um, roof, putting up Christmas mm. lights, and he had fallen, broken his back. Um, but you know, our lives were very different. You know, he did not try to get back to. Um, someone that was in shape. I don't know that he was ever in shape to begin with, but he came into the hospital not knowing who I was, what kind of person I was. And, you know, my next thought was my life has just transformed and instantly changed from the person I was. I mean, Mm -hmm. I was a powerhouse. Um, I was a, um, uh, a therapist. a territory manager. I was a pharmaceutical rep for an animal health company and traveled a third of Texas. So, um, you know, I had gone through a divorce, um, back in 2005 and that kind of helped Cadillac. Uh, it was the catalyst behind my drive to even, you know, become this Ironman athlete. Mm -hmm. It started with, you know, little 5Ks and then the 10Ks and then, well, then I can do a half, right? And then a half turned into a full marathon. And, uh, you know, I had talked to, um, uh, what's his name from uh, Transition? Marco. Marco. And he was Uh the one that said, hey, a marathon is a lot harder than an Ironman. And I could not. I could (laughs) not fathom what he was yeah. talking about until you go through it right yeah and then um yeah he's like by the time you're on to the to the marathon yep. after this 112 bike your body's full of blood and you know your legs are just going and they're just they'll be conditioned to go yeah um, 
after you I coached it. I coached Marco on his Ironmans. Did you? I did. did you? Yes, mm-hmm. I did. I did. It's interesting. I had no idea. Um, but um, you know, going forward, that's when I met Dawn. And yep. you know, you know what what kind of coach she was and kind of what <laughs> he was. And right. I was so well trained that after I finished my Ironman, I felt like I could keep going. When you right. saw people, um, you know, crawling or dragging yeah. or walking, miserable, miserable, dying, just wanting it to get to get do mm-hmm. over or get it over with. And for me, I was like, "Let's go! I'm ready!" You know, let's yeah. party. Let's. <laughs> where's my pizza? Where's my beer? You know, right? I was already ready for that. Uh, but um, I mean, that's know. that's my tagline as a coach uh, really? to cross the finish line with a smile. Like, yes. I don't want you to be, oh, Mis- you know, crawling and miserable. Like, that's not, that's not healthy. That's, that's not, not fun. fun. It's that's not, not fun. fun. No. Yeah. And I knew so, uh, yeah. that I was going to do what I did wrong on my first. And therefore, I was, let's go. I want to sign up for, let's go to Arizona. So I had right. um, driven up there with my friend Kelly and we drove up and became a volunteer. So we'd get first dibs at um, signing right, up. Right, back in the days. Or, uh, uh-huh. Yeah, back in the day. That's what you did. And now it's what, a lottery to get in? I mean, it's just. No, you could, you could still get in, but it's a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. there's so much more, right? Right. Exactly. Um, there, exactly. There's so many environments everywhere. Yeah, I guess you're, yeah. you're right. In that yeah. Sense. Um, but, um, so yeah. So that, four weeks out yes. you had now you had like you sev like you severed the spine. L1. Yes. I had an L1 burst fracture and my spinal cord was nearly severed. And okay. by Thank what, you. Uh, what that means is, you know, there was hope, although when it was such an accident as mine, my doctors sat there and told me and my family that I would never walk again, that this yep. was going to be my life. And my mom went up in their face and pointed her finger and said, you don't know what kind of person she is. She is not going to accept that. And you know, mark my word, she will walk again. And yes. even, you know, back at that point, I was looking at her like, I don't, I, I, I was dazed and confused of what my life was going to be like, but right. it was always in the back of my mind that, yes, I am going to walk. Yeah. And because I was such a brick house from training basically two years in a row, nonstop, right. Um, mm-hmm. that, um, you know, if it wasn't for my, my condition, I probably would have died or would have stayed in the chair the entire time. Right. Um, Let me ask you this. Did, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, No, I was going to ask you, did you have surgery? Was there a surgery involved in the very, in the, in the very beginning? Like, did they have, yeah. yeah, Okay. I figured that. I just didn't know the, I didn't remember the details. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I had to have a, um, L1 T12 spinal fusion and it was interesting That's because right. they, they basically had me vertical, um, um, to operate on me and, you know, whether or not I hallucinated, um, when the doctor, you know, I had a great surgeon, um, that, you know, I guess believed in me and, like I said, I don't know if I hallucinated this, but I remember him coming to me after the, after the surgery come, you know, I was coming out of it and he said, you did great gal. Um, I believe that you're going to get back to what you were doing. Nice. And that always just crossed my mind, always in the back of my mind. And, um, you know, my girlfriends, my gals were with me every second of the way. I mean, yeah. even right before the surgery where, you know, I was in ICU and nobody's allowed. My friends were like, we will, we will not say a peep. We just have to be here. And she needs to hold our hand this entire time. And they sat there on cold concrete Mm. for 24 hours or longer, holding my hand and praying for me that this, that I was going to get through the surgery. Right. And And I read like, and for people that, you know, 
this is my anatomy coming out, right? But you know, you got your cervical, you got your thoracic and you got your lumbar, like that's in your sacrum, right? Yes, so right. you had, th- you had thoracic one. You had, I had my L1. That was L1. Uh, the L1 was completely burst. It, it burst. was fragmented. Wow. And wow. if you saw, and, I, and I'll try to find the, the picture of what, my spine looks like x-ray. Um, I have this cage that basically um, almost fills up the entire of my back. I mean, you can, see, you can see the cage uh, on my back because I'm right. thin. And right. um, it, it just feels, it just feels weird. It, it, yeah. it, it's crazy. Yeah. And um, so there's this like mesh cage uh, metal cage that um, they replaced um, okay. at, for that L1, and okay. then they had this this huge cage that housed it. And you, you, it's it's just a crazy picture when you look at it. And you're like, that's in you because it looks so yeah, large, right. and you know I'm only so right. big. I'm five one. Yes, you are. And, yeah, uh, very petite. So you know it's 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 i feel it all the time it, sure. it you know it gets caught um yeah it's just a very weird um you know just something that i have to do with on a daily yeah. basis um but the surgery so, was in it was a nine and a yeah. half hours nine and a half hours really so let's yeah. move ahead a little bit because yeah. i know i i probably want to bring you back on because of just our conversations that we've had pre podcast, yeah. right? But yeah. like, let's talk about mindset. Because I think your mindset is absolutely incredible. Life. I'm sure you were not the happy go lucky person all the time. So as as the everyday healthy human is trying to maybe transition into their own better version of themselves, okay. what piece of advice could you give somebody who may be struggling mindset wise during a really tough patch? Well, I'm glad you said that because I'm an ambassador for um, this uh, medical device company called Nevro. And it um, they specialize in um, putting in uh, stimulators, pain stimulators, which I have their their product in my body. It's on my okay. the battery is on my right buttocks. I have another device um, on my left buttocks that's a Medtronic device to help uh, control my my nerves. Um, So um, the mindset that you are asking about, um, you know, I think when going back, I was always, um, I was always catapulted to strive because I felt like I was abandoned as a child from my father. Um, You know, he was an absent father um, through the divorce. He never bothered to get to know me, never sent me gifts, never sent me birthday Mm -hmm. cards. So in the back of my mind, um, it just kind of shaped the the type of person that I wanted to be with and the type of person um, as a parent that I wanted to be. You know, I have two wonderful kids that are um, in their mid twenties. You know, I have a twenty-six year old daughter that's getting her master's in business. Um, you know, is taking after her mama, and I have a twenty-four-year-old son who um, is in law school in his second year of law school that's taken after his daddy, and um, as a lawyer. And you know, I always gave them advice to, you know, put the things that don't matter behind you because you can't change them. Mm -hmm. Um, You can only grow from them and make you a better person and make you stronger from those past experiences, whether good or bad, you know, especially the bad ones. And um, it shapes, it helps shape your mind and how you deal with, um, loss and how you deal with abandonment and how you deal with pain. Um, Mm -hmm. And I still to this day struggle with intense pain that can go up to levels of 10 at times. Mm. Um, And, you know, it's, I I have to deal with the pain because it comes from me 
um, in my journey of, of in my therapy. And, you know, I was told I would never walk. Um, and I now am walking up to a mile yes, um, you are. and, um, running as of a mile as of about two months ago. And it was the best feeling I've had since, mm-hmm. you know, I had my prior to my accident and, and finishing those long runs and finishing those long rides and how much you sweat, um, you know, I I got to feel that again, you know, I can still swim like a power horse, you know, that is something that um, I had to relearn uh, without my legs. And it it helped make me a stronger swimmer. Oh, Um, I believe it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, my arms are, you know, my friend is like, how do you have these amazing arms? I'm like, well, think about it. I'm, you know, I swim up to a mile, you know, yep. or longer. And I am constantly, you know, you still use my wheelchair to, to roam about in the house. You know, I have a pretty large house that I have to get here and there. But even then, I'm trying to focus uh, forward on using my walker now instead of my chair in the house because mm-hmm. that's only going mm-hmm. to have that locomotion that I was talking to you uh right. in our conversation about and how that just stimulates your mind and it it you know it it, it signals um to your mind that yes your legs are still able to work and um yeah. you know the connectivity um so yeah. that mindset um I just I guess I've always just had this mindset had it, yeah. to keep you've had going. you've had growth going. mindset. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I think you know it's interesting like cuz I was at Ironman Wisconsin cheering on my athlete Jeff this past weekend. Yeah. And and he did amazing. It was his 13th Ironman. It it, it yeah. stamped his it punched his he got a um he is on the legacy, so he's going to Kona, but not until like 2026, something insane like that. Is this Anyways, Jeff Ohio from San Antonio? No, no, Jeff is from Wisconsin. Home. No. Okay. Um, anyways, long story short, just hearing you talk, 2012, four weeks out to your Ironman Arizona. Yes. You didn't know that that was going to be your last oh my God. event. No. You know, no. Right? And so I think as athletes who have the legs, who have the arms, who have all of the, the body functions to do this. We yes. sit there and bitch and complain Yes, sometimes for 140 or maybe not for 140 some, some miles, but quite yes. a bit along the, and way. <laughs> along the way. You choose to do this. You may never know when your last one is going to be. Yeah. You may never so, know when the last last breath exactly maybe. exactly so i've taught so, my kids to never yeah. leave angry never leave angry never go to bed angry um yeah. it bothers me i cannot i can't sleep i can't I, my thought yeah. which is keep going 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 and my grandmother taught me that early early on to never in spanish never to um you know let somebody leave the house without saying i love you um, yep. because you know, you, you might not return and exactly that to the other person would be like travesty. Right. That, oh right. my God, we left angry. We went to bed angry right. and she didn't wake up or he didn't wake up and we right. went to bed angry. And I, I, right. you know, that's just, not can't live happen. like that. Exactly. Right. Right. Exactly. So I just want to say like, thank you for just really showing people that what you have gone through and what you, and who you are and who you become has played such a monumental role in the San Antonio uh, area. Like we all see it. We see what you went through in 2012 and now who you're becoming. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I want to encourage you to get on more podcasts. I would probably, yeah. I think w- I think you need to come back and we need to talk more, you know, because yeah. I think, uh, you have an amazing story, but, um, I just wanted to say thank you for really showing the triathlon community that you can, you can make that mindset of yours is what got you to who you are today. Oh, sure. 
I mean, because you have to be physically strong, not necessarily physically strong uh, when you're training, right? Right. Right. Um, And that was, I, I was coached that, that, you know, train by yourself at times because oh yeah you're going to be alone and by yourself on the road um mm-hmm. in the race and yeah. you don't have that that other person to you know to do it with you right and i did this for me and that was always in the back of my mind like you know my add came into play i guess yeah um, yeah. that, you know, I, that's where I, I let out all my frustrations, all my thoughts, all my goods, my bads, my past, my right. everything. I just put out there and mm-hmm. it was on the road and I took that and I still keep that in the back of my mind to do what I'm, what I'm doing now. And I'm right. proud of where I am now. Um, you know, I started this foundation, um, mm-hmm. and it's helped people, and it's going to help people. And I'm actually living a legacy um, yes, with are. this um, with this uh, machinery that I helped contribute the funds to, yeah. because it's going to outlive us. Mm-hmm. You know, according to my physical therapist, you know, I'm one of five um, donors that's going to be a, a, a sticker on on this piece of machinery it's amazing and amazing. um to me you know that that's amazing because it's gonna it's gonna be there for as long as it's there beyond yeah right right yeah. so uh let me uh where can my followers and where can my uh all my friends follow you and where can they learn about your foundation okay well great um so we have a website that is is current, but it's going to be built bigger and better as we speak. And that's at now you see me.org. And it's N O W Y O U, the letter C M E dot org. Um, it was taken. Now you see me, S E E was taken. So, okay. uh, we're our presence is on Facebook and Instagram. And, um, you know, we're excited about a run that we host every fall um, in October called Monster Dash. And it's a 5K, a 10K, and a one mile. Um, And we encourage uh, physically disabled to come out and compete and, you know, show what you got and the camaraderie on that on that race course. Um, it's so much fun. It's getting, getting bigger and better every year. We have a ton of sponsors that are, are helping us out. Um, and we are excited for this, uh, amazing that we're coming up on. Yeah. It's October. Good. Well, I will, I will put all that information in the show notes. So if you guys want to go and enjoy, do a 5k, 10k with Monica in San Antonio, uh, It, yes. Anybody it, can, can join. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. So then I have one final question for you. Sure. Um, for those who are transitioning, cause you know, butterflies are a big part of my world, right? So for those that are learning how to metamorphosize into their own butterfly, how would you, what piece of advice could you give somebody that's learning how to transition into their own butterfly, just like you have. Okay. Um, what I would tell them is to keep, keep your heart and mind strong. Um, let go of the past because you can't change that anymore. Um, I get very frustrated when people say, oh, you know, this happened. And and I'm like, yeah, that's, that's over and done with. We can't go mm-hmm. back. We all do it. We all we do. do it. But it's a, it's a matter of how you can confront that and put that into um, a learning experience for you and use that um, and grow from that and learn from that and take that strength um, that, that you're that you're getting out of all that and use that for positivity 
in your next transition, your next butterfly, your next metamorphosis. Um, and, and, um, you know, keep, keep that, keep that lively, keep that always in the back of your mind, because that's the only thing that you have to keep you going. Nobody else. There's nobody else. It's just nobody else. It's just you. That is, that's a beautiful way to end our, end our time together, even though I don't want it to end, but I will tell you this, Monica, I love you. I adore you. And I just am so thankful for you to be on the podcast with me and that we've maintained a friendship for so many years without really seeing each other, but like we just picked up where we left off. So. Yeah, I, I believe that too. I strongly believe yeah. that too. And yeah. the feeling is mutual and I feel like I can never get enough. Um, I know. But yes, let's talk um, outside the podcast. I need yes, to of course. From you. Um, I think this is somewhere I need to be in the next step of my metamorphosis. <laughs> Your metamorphosis, right? Yeah. Y'all, if you are loving the Everyday Healthy Human podcast, you know what to do. Give me that five star rating, share, make a comment, like, reach out to Monica, go for a run, do a 5K. Just remember to be present and really stay true to who you are because I think that's what Monica and I have done as we we've aged. Yeah. Comment. We do. Yeah. As I connect my Texas roots to my Costa Rica roots, what do I say? Pure.